welcome back onto my YouTube channel. Guys, forgive me for my voice. I've slightly lost. I've literally been camping for four days at David's Tent. It literally is the best festival ever. And it's actually a worship festival for, for those of you who don't know what it is. Honestly, it was the best experience ever in my entire life. And it was just so beautiful. So many people just coming together who genuinely love Jesus just worshipping together. Now obviously it was 72 hours long, um, but obviously people are gonna sleep. Um, I mean, I tried to get to sleep. I got about, probably about three hours a night sleep. And literally I've been so tired these last two days, like even the drive home yesterday, because it's actually based in Sussex, I think it is. Um, so it's a good three hours, like nearly three hours anyway, from where I live. And it literally, I was like falling asleep, like on the way, well, near enough falling asleep on the way home. I was so tired, because hardly any sleep, worshipping, singing really loud, um, just, oh God, so much. But honestly, the experience was amazing, and just wanted to share that with you guys and do a quick video. And I've not done a video in so long because I've literally had so many exams on. Thank God they've slightly, well, they've finished for now anyway. Um, thank God, that's a whole nother um, video that I need to just do and share with you guys. Um, and then, yeah, and then David's Tent. Um, but honestly, it's the best thing ever. I've heard of David's Tent before. Um, yeah, I've heard of it before, but I've not like looked into it. And then on top of it, I've only just like come back to Christ again the last two years. So yeah, and then obviously we had a pandemic like one of those years. So yeah, I just never really looked into it. And honestly, like last year I was praying and I said to God, like, you know when you see those videos like floating around TikTok or just on social media in general, and I literally seen like a video, well, quite, quite a few videos of like, just like loads of young people just worshipping together. Like I think I've seen a video of like loads of young people in like at this university or something. And honestly it was like this massive field and so many people just worshipping together. It was the most beautiful experience ever. And I was praying and I was like God please I want an experience like this. I pray that I can experience something like this not knowing David's tent, there is something like this here. Honestly, when I seen a friend of mine going recently, um, uh, and honestly, like, I was like, I'm coming, like, that's like, I need to go. And yeah, I do not regret it, guys. Like, literally, just even the whole like, camping experience as well has been amazing. Like, I was always someone who said, I'm not doing camping. Like, I'm not a person for the wild. Like, I'm just not out here in the wild. Like, I hate insects, the cold, everything. But honestly, like, I would not change that experience for nothing. I would definitely be camping again, and I would definitely be going to David's tent again. Like, just meeting so many people as well, like, having fellowship with people. Honestly, it's been the most beautiful experience. You know, like, when you wake up in the morning and you're camping, and then you've got your neighbours next to you, like, in their tents. Good morning. Hello. People having breakfast, like people be out here frying food, like on them, um, you know, those stoves that you can like carry around with you. I didn't even know they existed before the other day. <laughs> yeah, boy. I was just so amazed by like the things people were bringing and doing, and it was just so beautiful. And people sharing things with each other, and because everyone's just there who just loves Jesus, like everyone's just so nice as well and honestly it was just beautiful like I'm just getting emotional like just thinking about it right now and honestly like I wouldn't change it for the world like just oh like even a lot of the time like like there'd be periods in the day sorry I feel like I'm kind of going all over the place here like I wanted to just share my experience but I'm like a bit all over like I'm just chatting with you like I chat with my friends <laughs> Like, even things like, like, they'd have, obviously, the worship on all the time, like, 72 hours straight, like, non-stop, not even at night, not even stopping. So, for people who want to go and worship at night or stay up at night. Um, and 
They'd also have other like things going on in the day, so like you'd have breakout tents, so maybe you've got a prayer tent, maybe you've got like a teach a tent like where then someone may be teaching in there, or even like the kids' tent. Oh my god, I was so amazed by the kids' tent and the kids' activities that they do, and they literally cater to from like I think from like really young babies to like really old like probably like teenagers and they'll do like different activities for them you can actually even drop off your kids and go and worship in the big tent and then leave your kids in like the kids tent and they'll do loads of activities with them honestly it was so amazing like i didn't take my son with me this year because i wanted to see what it'd be like but honestly just seeing that i was like i really want to take my son but at the same time, I know what he's like with the cold as well. They're like, I'm cold, I'm tired, I want to go. So I'm like, hmm, I'm going to like think about it, whether I should take him. But Or maybe if I'm going with a group of people that I know that have families and stuff, that maybe like my son will be, um, will have company and maybe we could go back with them or, or whatever. But honestly, I did see like... Um, Loads of families as well camping. Some people had some massive tents. When I say massive, I mean they were so big. Like, it was crazy. Like, literally, they it's like they took their whole house with them there. Like, people had tables out, chairs, wine. Like, people had bottles of wine. Like, <laughs> and, like, having, like, proper family dinners. Like, they'd be frying at their dinner. Like, honestly, it was like, whoa. Like, we didn't take that kind of stuff with us this year. But things that we did, um like take with us and I felt like for someone who it's their first time I was pretty prepared also because my friend has been before so she kind of told us like you know bring quilts and stuff like that so she knew like obviously some of the things to take and so I brought like quilts, sleeping bag, we brought air beds, like all these different stuff to make sure like we we're warm in that tent and um we were like a lot warmer let's say than maybe some others and stuff but um, I would definitely say like the first two nights because we spent three nights. It was three nights, four days. The first three nights, um, what happened? The first three, nights? yeah. Basically, it was a little bit cold because, um, like obviously I had a quilt and stuff like that. But then on the last night, I ended up like doubling up on like clothing, and that night I was like really, really warm. But then that last morning, I was like my throat was just killing me because it's like. Although your body and everything's more warm, like, we're still out here in the wild. But honestly, it was just so beautiful, like, I'm just talking a lot about the camping experience. It's because it was a new experience for me as well. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was amazing. So they literally, I've seen kids, I've seen, like, oh, it was just so beautiful. The only um, cons I would say to camping is the toilet. Not very nice. And I'm normally, like, really funny when it comes to things like that. But you end up just adapting to it and honestly I still, it's not put me off from like camping. Um, it was just like smelling and stuff obviously. And then you've got the showers. The first morning I had a freezing cold shower and I was thinking oh my days it's going to be freezing cold like every day. And then I remember getting back to the tent and my friend was like no like I've never had a freezing cold shower it should be warm. So I think like the odd showers were like cold so then the other two mornings I made sure I found a shower that was warm, so it was it was fine. Um, so that was good. Um, but yeah, the only two things that put me off was the the toilet and the cold. But it was, hasn't put me off to the point that I would never camp again. I would definitely camp. Um, and then it was just beautiful, like fellowshipping with people, making new friends. Like honestly, it was just so beautiful. Like the people that you meet, and oh, I just my heart is just oh my god, like just. I think it's just amazing. I'm literally getting emotional. Like my arm days, my eyes are watering. Oh my gosh. Just thinking about the whole experience. And I think it's just because, obviously, I don't really have many friends that are, like, saved and, like, love Jesus just so much. Or people can say they're saved and believe in God. and But do you really, really, really love Jesus? Like, are you really sold out for Jesus? And it's just, like, it's hard to find people who are, like, you know, want to grow like you. Like, you don't have to be on the same level spiritually, but... You know, it's about the heart. Do you love him genuinely? You could have so many flaws and you could be like, literally, you could still have loads of, I don't know, like, I don't know, you could still be a smoker, for example, like, but do you, is your heart there for Jesus? Like, do you still love Jesus? And all of those things don't matter because obviously Jesus helps, like, you change on that journey and, and all of that and delivers you from all of these different things. But 
I'm looking at like people's heart like what's your heart like and it's really hard to like find people who've got a heart for Jesus so just being somewhere that like everyone well most people just got the heart for Jesus it was just so beautiful and just even just fellowship and people talking making new friends and um, at the tents and then um, so like where our tents were we were camping and then also like at the big tents and you know where the actual event was so the main event was actually in a big tent and I'm gonna see if I can like drop in a few videos here of like what it was like <laughs> Yeah, the, the actual event was in the big tent um, and then as I said before there was like other little tents like with prayer tents there was even a prophetic tent actually which is something I want to talk about which I thought was so amazing that God like really showed me um, this weekend but yeah and the worship was just so beautiful oh my gosh just like at times I would be like so you're worshipping and at times I would just stop and just look around and just smile because I'm just looking at everyone just like genuinely got a heart for Jesus and like everyone's just so pure or well, most people like just pure and you know you can just see everyone's love and it's like oh my god god I love you so much I'm actually crying oh my nose I'm actually crying Yeah, just literally seeing everyone's just love and it was just like so beautiful. And then, oh my gosh, something I loved was like they had this big fire, like log fire pit thing. And you could literally like camp around it and like everyone's like singing or talking and fellowshipping. <laughs> Honestly, it's so beautiful. Like the one night we stayed up till like three a.m. Like literally sat around the fire. It was so beautiful. Like most of the time, it was just talking and stuff. And but I was so captivated by this the fire. I don't know what it was, but literally to the point that the next night, I think it was the last night, when some of my friends were in the big tent worshiping, I would be going back and forth from worship to sitting in the in front of the fire by myself. Like obviously, there's loads of other people there. But like I'd sit by myself, literally just staring at the fire, and like I'd just be so captivated, and I'm like, oh, like this is just so beautiful, and just looking at everyone, like oh my god. And then I remember on my days, this was so funny. But like, so like obviously the fire, you know, fire is just like like red, orangey color, not red, what's about like an orangey kind of yellowy color flame, right? And um, then all of a sudden, like. Bam, like there was all these colours coming out of it on the top. Like blue, purple, like all different colours. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, God, is that you? Like, is that you, God? Is this the burning bush? I was like, Hold up. Hey. Literally like a child, like saying this in my head, obviously, because no, I wasn't with anyone. And I just remember hearing this other guy like say, oh my God, can you see that? And like, I was, then I said to him, I kind of dipped in the conversation because he was talking to his friend. I was like, oh my God, how beautiful is that? That's so amazing. In my head, I'm like, God, is that you? Like, <laughs> I'm so silly. But honestly, I was just so captivated. But then um, one of the our friends that we were with came over a little while after and he was like, oh yeah, I think they put copper in it or something, something like that in it. I was like, oh, oh, okay, like, like, there's me like having my little childlike moment like god is that you but yeah it was just funny it was just funny um ended up not being god don't think but i could definitely feel god there just his presence by the fire in the tents like i could feel him so strong in the love and it was just like oh my god like honestly i have fallen back in love with god like so much this weekend like I've not come back to the same person. Like, my love for God is just, like, mind-blowing out of this world. And honestly, like, some of you might be watching this and just think, oh, like, you know, she's just new to this. Like, you know, uh, maybe some of you guys have experienced stuff like that before. But for me, 
it was definitely a new experience, it was a mind blowing experience, it was beautiful, full of love, full of God's presence and I definitely, definitely will be back again and I just wanted to share that with you guys and just show you but um, back to like the prophetic tent that I mentioned, basically um, like people would queue up to go into this into this prophetic tent and basically even this is like a new thing for me because I've never seen this before but like there'll be people in there that work at David's tent who are like on the prophetic team and basically someone can go I think there's like 25 team members or something and each of them like will do like a drawing for you so like you'll go in you'll get a word from from God through them so God will give that person a word for you and like a drawing and like like a picture and they'll draw it out and stuff and give you it which I thought was amazing and loads of other people thought the same thing because there was so many people queuing up for it and they had it for like an hour and a half on Saturday and then like an hour and a half I think on Sunday basically we stood in the queue for like an hour on Saturday and then we didn't end up getting in because they ended up having to turn some people away because it was so busy so then the guy like um sorting it out in charge he was like okay go back tomorrow just come back on time da -da -da. we got there the next day on time and there literally was such a long queue like it went all the way down the field like all the way around like it was so long and we were just like we're never gonna get in like this is crazy so i ended up going to speak to the guy again who was in charge i was like oh my gosh like i thought i'd get in like i really wanted a word and i'm personally i'm looking for a word from God because I want a confirmation from God regarding a lot of dreams I've been having and words I've been having from God and um, this is just what God was showing me basically like in terms of all of that I didn't need this but for some reason I was just really seeking this clarity when God's already given me like lots of clarity and um, but it's because I've been having a lot of conflict well not a lot a few conflicting like and um, views and opinions and just hearing like conflicting YouTube videos that say that are not personally for me but sometimes you'll take things for you and it's not even for you so then yes yeah, so I ended up um, taking a lot of that like just for gospel and it wasn't even for me so it ended up like confusing me with a lot that God had already spoken to me about or given me dreams about so I'm now seeking clarity thinking okay God like you know I really really want a word from you I really want clarity please clarify through someone and I was hoping this was going to be for this person in this tent anyway I go in this tent no sorry what was I talking about that day I didn't go in the tent so um then anyway I spoke to the guy in charge and the guy in charge said um what did he say that basically he even said look you're probably not going to get in you should have got here really early but he was like look I know you was waiting here yesterday so I'm really going to try and like slot you in but if you come to come find me at five o'clock he's like don't be late find me at five o'clock in the big tents so of where they worship and i'll get you a personal word so i said okay well it's just me and my friend so like is that okay and he said yeah that's fine i'm thinking like it was just me and my friends go back at five and there's like a never queue and i was like oh my days are we even gonna get this word and i was thinking surely it shouldn't be this hard just just get a word from god and i'm not gonna lie i remember saying to someone earlier that day i was like i'm not gonna lie it feels a bit weird like getting a word in a tent from God when we should be able to hear God like ourselves and it just kind of like I don't know obviously people can give you prophetic words don't get me wrong and and um I think it's amazing it's beautiful but sometimes I feel like when you force it it's just like okay like just chill out like kind of thing and it was just it was just a whole new experience for me so I'm just like hmm okay anyway so I was like you know what let me just wait because also the reason why i really wanted to just get this word so one i really wanted clarity on top of it god gave me this revelation the other day of a dream i had literally exactly a year ago of basically lots of stuff was happening in this dream i'm not going to go to deal to detail of the dream specifically it was a big dream because one it's long and number two is some really personal stuff in it but one of the parts of it is like i was in the, on this journey in this car and it was so crazy because the two friends that I went to David's tent with ended up being the two people that were in the car journey to this place that I was going to. And um, what's even more crazy is that one of the girls that I was going with, I've known her like literally about 14 years, but we were never close. We didn't really speak. If we see each other, it's like, hello, bye. But like, it was so crazy because last year, um, towards the end of the year, we started speaking through um, something. And then recently, because I recently joined her church, which my dad has always been, like, he's been to for, like, years and years and years, and I just never went. 
but a couple months ago, a couple months ago I joined and then all of a sudden we've been getting really close and that's who I went David Sent with. So then, um, then someone else was meant to come with us to David Sent as well, like one of her friends, but she ended up not being able to come because she got sick, got sick unfortunately. So then she gave her ticket to another girl in the church, another one of their friends, and this other girl was the girl in my dream. And this is what's crazy, but because I didn't, and I do not know her, like I've never known her before, and basically, her name's Michelle, and basically, I have an older sister called Michelle, but I don't talk to her. Sorry guys if I'm going like up and down like all over the place. I hope you're with me uh, with this video. But because um, I have an older sister called Michelle, God used her in the dream last year, which is really confusing because I don't really have a relationship with that sister. I haven't seen her in a long time. I've spoken to her in a long time. And um, for no particular reason, we just didn't grow up together. And um, basically, so I, was, I found it really weird, but I never really like, I don't know, I didn't really take it that part seriously because I got the revelation for the rest of the dream. So I was like, okay, you know, like I'm not going to like bother like rattling my brain trying to figure that out. Um, which is just something else God taught me. It's just about being patient for like, you know, hearing him about certain things or dreams or da 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 da. And that, you know, don't stress yourself out trying to like work something out. Or hear God on something. He'll speak to you in the right time or reveal something to you in the right time. So yeah, I just thought it was like really powerful how Michelle, my sister, was used in that dream. But it turned out it was Michelle who went with us and she wasn't even meant to come. So anyway, so the reason why yeah I wanted to like hear this word in the prophet prophetic tent was because I was just like, I know I'm meant to be at this event. Like I had that dream on top of it. I had another dream earlier last week actually where I was walking down this corridor to this event or to this place and there was loads of snakes coming at me and they wanted to bite me and um, basically yes all these snakes wanted to was trying to bite me and I remember there's a few people like behind me helping me with like the odd snake or two like grabbing them but they just basically just watched these snakes coming to bite me and I had to deal with it myself but I was trying to get to the end of this corridor to this place but when I woke up, well obviously snakes can represent like a lot, any, just basically the demonic realm. It could represent like lies, it could represent deception, it could represent just demonic spirits, it could represent attacks, etc. And this place that I was trying to get to at the end, I initially thought when I woke up, oh like it's to do with my destiny, my purpose, like the enemy is going to attack me a lot. Because I have had like dreams before where God will show me how the enemy is like sending a lot of attacks to stop me from like my purpose and stuff. So I was thinking that was like another one of those dreams, until one of my friends, so another my fr another friend, Bex, who um, who I was going with, sorry the video like cut out, um, so another one of my friends, Bex, who I was going with, basically, um, who I went with, sorry, um, she um, basically posted this picture of David's tent on her um, Instagram like a week, no, it was days before we were going, so it was after I had this snake dream. And I remember seeing it, I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen that before, I've seen that somewhere, where have I seen it? And then I was like, oh my gosh, my dream, that's what i seen in my dream. So at the end of the corridor was this event, and I just remember there being like purple coloured, like lights and stuff. And it was just like, I remember just being this massive event. And it literally was that picture she posted, and I was like, I was just mind blown. So I was like, I know that God's showing me that the enemy's going to send me a lot of attacks to get to this event which means I'm meant to be at David's tent. I'm supposed to be there. God wants me there. Something powerful is going to happen. So I knew that basically, yeah, I was meant to be there. And by the way, the enemy did send me a lot of attacks. Like, I feel like that's just a whole other video. Like, but in a nutshell, like, I got really sick. And obviously, we had to do COVID tests and stuff. Like, I had a situation where I burnt my face. Like, just my friend like was attacked, like my other friend, like the church, like there was just so many different things that were just going on and it was enemy was just trying it basically to just stop us from going. Um, I also lost money, like oh my gosh, like it was just, there's just so much that went on. So I was like, you know what, I want to hear from God at any opportunity, I know I'm meant to be here, so I need to receive this prophetic word. I was really just hoping that I just had something specific that I wanted to hear God on. So, um, sorry I'm going on guys, but like, this is, it is amazing, like, just all of this. Um, so anyway, ended up obviously at five o'clock, I was in the queue for the prophetic words, ended up sitting down, speaking to someone. So initially, initially, like, when they, obviously, because they're going to give you a prophetic word, they say to you, like, this lady was like, oh, so do you know anything about the prophetic? Have you had a prophetic word before? 
I was like, well, I'm actually quite prophetic myself, actually. And I was just like, I've had, you know, loads of dreams and this dream and that. And God said this and God said that. And I've even had a dream about being here and God showed me this. And, God sh and then after all that, she was literally like, wow, like, I feel like I'm really, like, underqualified, like, compared to you. She was like, can you give me a word? I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, first of all, I felt a bit bad because I was like, I do not mean to like make her feel like intimidated. Not that she did, but like just, I didn't want that at all. Like I wanted to come and receive from her, like receive from God through her. And like, I didn't want to make it her feel like she's underqualified compared to me or, or in any way, shape or form. So I was like, oh my days, like what's going on? And I thought she was joking. And she was actually like, no, like, you know, if you're, if you know, she was like, no pressure, but I'd love to get a word from you, you know, you just pray and, you know, you just, if there's a picture that comes to your mind, you know, you just draw it out. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And I was like, God, like, what the hell? And I was literally like to her, like, I'm actually quite scared. I was like, I don't know how to do this. Because I was like, um, you know, I haven't really done this before, but I think I've done it like once before, like in my other church, um, where it was like a test of like the prophetic kind of thing. And I, I still, like, I find it a bit weird sometimes, like, forcing it, but obviously it's, I think it's just testing, like, your ability to hear God, so it's not wrong, but it's, I just found it a bit weird. So, um, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this, and she was like, honestly, it's fine, she was like, if nothing comes to your head, it's fine, she was like, I'll just pray, so, like, she just prayed, she was like, if anything comes to your mind, and she said the same with me, if anything comes to mind, I'll just draw it. So she went and got like another board and paper for me to draw. I was like, oh my days, like this is actually happening, like what's going on? And then anyway, so she prayed and literally I remember I had a really bad headache and then this picture of literally like a bow, it was like a pointy bow and then you know the rowing stick things, um, literally I seen them like pointing as well but it was like standing up like next to the bow as if someone was holding them up, it was two. And, um, but obviously no one was there holding it up. And I was like, I told her, I was like, you know, it probably was nothing. My head's hurting me anyway. It's probably really random. Like, I'm really sorry. She's like, no, 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 it's fine. And then she told me, um, what she got and what she got from God. Not what I was looking for, but it still was a, like a confirmation anyway. And it was amazing what she said. She kind of showed me like this ant mount thing, like a ant little mountain basically. And she said, there was, she seen me like going up the mountain and there was loads of ants behind me. And she said how God's like calling me to be a leader and there's like loads of people that I'm going to be bringing, that God's going to use me to bring to Christ. But it's going to be really difficult to kind of get them up this mountain, but God's going to use me to do it. So he's really calling me to be a leader and I was like, you know what, like that does, it is a confirmation because I've heard of it before. And I really do feel like, I was even saying to my friend later on, you know, I do feel like God is really calling me to be a leader. I felt it was so strong and, you know, sometimes I do feel like there's just so much inside of me that needs to be birthed, that needs to come out, but I don't know how sometimes or sometimes I'm lazy if I'm being completely honest. Like, I really do feel like there's this whole kingdom inside of me and it just needs to come out and, like, I've just been pretty lazy or not seeking God as much as I should have been on what this is or, or, or it's like I kind of know what some bits, what it is, but I don't really know how to navigate it and that's why we obviously need God. So obviously she opened my eyes a lot to that. God used her to open my eyes a lot to that, to like, I need to like birth this, like it has to come out. And and that's another thing I was saying to my friend as well, you know, I haven't come back like the same person. Um, you know, I went there like, you know, with this hunger to hear God and just this love for God. And, and I've come back like so much more in love with him, so much more, like, I need to do God's work. I need to do it. And like, I need to birth what's inside of me. Like, it's it's just even more powerful inside of me, like, coming back from David's tent. And she just, like, you know, opened my eyes to that, um, what God's shown her, basically. Um, so that was one thing that God showed me. But what also God showed me is that, um, so obviously, as we were talking and stuff, and I was telling her some of my dreams, and I was like, you know, I'd really love clarity on that, and da 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 And she was just like, well... You know, I haven't, I'm not really good with, like, she said, I think, dreams and stuff like that. Um, I'm not, I think I'm paraphrasing here. I think she said, like, in another way. Um, but she was like, but have you got anyone, like, to help you navigate your dreams, like a mentor or something like that? And I said, I don't really, but, like, um, you know, I, I, I would love someone, like, like, I would, like, a mentor, basically. I mean, I'm, I'm under these, like, new pastors now, and I said that I could 
maybe go to them more about my dreams and stuff but you know it would be really nice to have like someone who's really gifted in that particular area of dreams and and really help me so she was just like you know that I'm, I'll pray and ask God to help you like to um, bring someone to help me navigate it and stuff and um, and as I was explaining as well to the, about the dreams she was like you know it really it does sound like you're hearing God because I was like saying to how like sometimes I get a little bit confused but it's only when I'm trying to like I'm doing I'm overthinking or I'm allowing other people's views or opinions to come in which is it also taught me that you know you need to be so careful the voices that you're allowing in or people that you go to about you know words that God's given you or dreams or visions or this or that or what God's showing you because um it really the enemy can really use that to confuse you and it's not that the person is saying something wrong or doing anything wrong but God's not if God's not speaking to them about that particular thing that he's spoken to you about it's going to naturally confuse you and, and the enemy will use that to manipulate the situation. So it taught me that, um, but also what God's shown me is that um, that I hear him very clearly. And I think that was what was a big thing is the fact that God just showed me like one, I have a massive gift that I don't, I forget sometimes because a lot of times as well, like even over this weekend, like I'll casually talk to people like, oh, I had this dream, oh, I had that dream, God showed me this, oh, this, da 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 And I speak about it so casually because it's so normal to me and I actually forget that that's not normal to other people and it's very like a few people in the world, um, like not literally few people, but, you know, compared to the whole population, it's like a few, you know, um, that dream a lot like that and it's actually a massive gift and like and actually getting the revelation as well like because a lot of times I do get the revelation and I think that sometimes like I hear God so clearly to the point that I then doubt because I'm like nah there's no I couldn't hear him that clearly like do you know what I mean it's just it's crazy but so God just showed me that one I hear him very clearly two I have a massive gift that I need to protect I need to honor I need to just, yeah, look after really well. I need to pray over more. Um, and I need to use more as well because it's a big, powerful gift. Um, and also the fact that, what's it called? I don't even know the third thing. That I feel like I'm just all over the place. But just that God is just, yeah, he's just doing a lot. And it's just like, and God's just, and I don't need further clarity. Like, we, I have a relationship with him. I hear him. I also have a gift. And God's like, girl, you hear me clearly. Like, you don't need to go to prophets or this and that. If I, if you yourself are prophetic, <laughs> I think that's what I'm just like, oh my God. Oh, yeah, and the third thing is that God's shown me is the fact that there is this leader in me that God has called me to be and I need to act on it now. Like, there's such an urgency that it's like, I need to do it now. And that's why even with this video, like, I want to just get on here, share it straight away because I knew that, I um, literally just got back yesterday and I kid you not, even talking ages, like, now, I'm just, like, talking so long, it's hurting my chest a bit and my throat because I do feel a bit ill from like all the cold but at the same time I know if I leave it any longer I'm just gonna end up delaying um maybe the video is not gonna be I'm not gonna share the emotions as much as in the video because you know emotions like die out like um and maybe I don't know like maybe I might find an excuse as to why I don't do it and I just need to get it out and I think that's what it is now like I just need to go I just need to go and this is to you guys as well like if God has asked you to do something don't delay just go just do it pray about it and just go and do it because I feel like we as individuals we delay a lot we are lazy we procrastinate and um God's called us so much like to do so much like and God wants to use you to have impact and influence on so many people to be change makers to be the light in the world like you are the light in the world and God's just like, I need to use you. And by using you, like, you are changed and transformed and just, like, throughout it. So it's not like God's just using you as this, like, vessel and you're just there, like, hanging off the edge and, and you're just, like, drained and you're not healed and you're not, and I don't know, and you're not um, benefiting from it or whatever. You are blessed and benefit through it. Like, you are transformed. You are healed and everything through it, through helping others, through serving others. And it's just, it's so beautiful, like, just everything. And just everything that God, everything that God showed me this weekend. And it's just crazy. Like, I went there like, right, 
I want a confirmation. Well, no, I went there to receive from God and thinking that it was going to be this big thing. This is another thing as well. Like sometimes we're like, we're looking for the big things or like, we're like, God, I need you to move this big way or this big way or da 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 da. And it could be something so small. So for me, it was literally that prophetic word that I went to get, but actually, um, and I didn't even know like initially that they were there or like had a prophetic term. Um, and I went, also when I found out about it, I wanted to go and get that word to receive from God to get clarity on something that he's already given me so much clarity about. And God's just like, girl, like, is it that little small thing that God's just shown me? You are in the right place. You are on the right path. You are hearing me so clearly. And you also have a massive gift and a powerful calling on your life. And it's like, some of these things you might even know already, but you forgot or you you don't treasure it or you, I don't know, you just haven't really been speaking to God about it or... I don't know, like, the enemy can blind you from certain things, but it's just like, in that small moment, my mind was just like, poof, like, mind blown. I was just like, God, I love you. Literally like, oh, God, my eyes. I actually love him so much, and it's just, on this journey with God, it's just been the most, like, crazy, challenging, hard at times, but beautiful so beautiful and I think the fact that no not think I know it's just the fact that his love is just so overwhelming his love is just so beautiful his love is just honestly I'm just feeling it even right now and I'm just like God is just so loving and like all of us who just when I rejected him when other people reject him and you know and I understand that like I do understand at times because it's like you know we're hurt in life we go through through ugh, through things in life and stuff and I get it I get it but it's the enemy who just blinds us to God's love and God just wants your heart like he just wants your heart and he just wants you to come back to him and he's just like just give me your heart and I'll do the rest give me your heart and I'll change you I'll help you I will help you change I'll do this I'll do that it's going to be a hard journey it's going to be lots of tests and trials and just because as well we give our life to Christ, because I initially thought this, we then think, oh, our life's going to be amazing now, and it's going to be perfect, and we're like, we're now not prone to like, any bad things happening, or I don't know, or whatever, or like going through certain things in life, no, you know, we're human, we're in this world, and we're still going to go through things, and maybe like, some bad things might still happen, like you, I don't know, a loved one might pass away, and it sounds really horrible, but like, and like, yes, I believe in healing and I believe in this and believe that. But I also believe that everything happens for a reason. And that when we go through these tests and trials, or like even with me, a lot of my exams, and it was such a stressful period. There was so much God showed me through that as well. Like, I had like a breakdown one day. I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. But like, even through that, God showed me so much. But it's the fact that, that scripture, that I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You are with me, Lord. You walk with me. And even though we walk through the darkness, we walk through tests, we walk through trials, we walk through bad times, we walk through pain, he is with us at all times. Like the fact that God the Father sent the Son, Jesus, to die for us on the cross and the pain that he went through. Do you think that we're now not subject to pain? Like he died for us. He went through persecution and pain and, and then was nailed to a cross. Do we think we're not, we're not like, we're now, you know, excused from pain and life and things? No, we're not. But what we have with us is him. What we have with us is his love in us. And no one can take that away. No one can take his love and his joy and his peace away from us because it's in here. And it's just so beautiful. And I just, honestly, like you guys can just see just how emotional I'm just getting right now. But just like the whole david's tent oh my gosh this video has gone on for ages i'm so sorry but just it's just blown my blown my mind so much more and i just pray that like you know i do not that that does not disappear and you know i pray that i do act on you know that transformation in me that god's done and how god's blown my mind and opened my eyes so much so much i just need to act 
move forward and keep pushing you know spending time with god more praying more worshiping more like i love to worship but i'm not gonna lie like through my exams i found it really difficult at times to worship or find the time to worship because i was just so stressed but going back to worship and i'm just like, i fall in love with him so much more like worshiping is one of the best things ever like because you're just falling in love with him and it's just so beautiful and like that's what god wants he just wants your heart and he just wants to overwhelm you with so much love <sighs> anyway um let me stop going on and on and on but yeah i just wanted to share with you the experience of david's 10 i recommend it to everyone to go honestly it's life transforming um but go with an expectant heart um if you don't love jesus there's no point in going because you're not going to receive. Um, if you love him and you go with the heart ready to receive, honestly, it's just, oh my God, you will receive and he will just blow your mind. Um, and it's just so beautiful just seeing so many people that love, just love him. And I think that was just what I just loved so much. So a lot I've learned, a lot I've experienced, even in the small, um, and also what was crazy is that even when I went to see that lady about the prophetic word and like even imagine she turned around and said to me and even the guy in charge was like you need to be on the prophetic team like next year and I thought they were joking and they were being deadly serious and I was like oh my god like and the thing is what's also crazy is that um she actually said to me like you know god um you know this will help you with your confidence and stuff because I was saying to her as well like I feel like sometimes when I'm hearing God or like the dreams and stuff like that, sometimes I feel like because I lack confidence in my ability to hear God, I seek clarity from others and then that's when it confuses me. And she said that this might help you with your confidence by me giving her a word. And I remember I was speaking to a friend about it later on that day and they were like, you should do it because this is probably it. Like God is building your confidence. So maybe me going to her one maybe not was wasn't for me to receive a word maybe she needed to receive that word from me like god through me because also she did say at the end like because i was thinking oh my gosh it's probably just my head about the boat thing if you guys remember sorry this video's gone on so long but she was like you know what actually people have said today like recently about this whole water thing and boats and so maybe there is something god's saying and that i was like oh my gosh so maybe there was something god was showing me for you and she was like but it's just like God hasn't, it wasn't this specific that I've heard before. And I was like even blown by that because I was like, if that was genuinely God showing me that for her, the fact that God could be so specific through me to her just also confirms as well the gift that he's placed on my life that I don't use, I don't exercise, I don't pray over, I don't look after as much as I should. So yeah, it's just showing me that. So basically just, I know that one thing that God has been really working on me with is my confidence a lot in these this past season. And I know that I'm stepping into this new season now because I've like felt it. I'm just like coming out of this shell, should I say, that's how it's felt. But like, um, and that's how I feel like David's tent was like a big marker for that as well. But like one thing he's really been showing me in this past season or working on me with is my confidence. My confidence to hear him and he's shown me a lot through things, people, dreams, like so many different ways. The confidence, like God needs me to have confidence because I hear him very clearly. I see him, I discern so crazily, like it's just mind blowing. But God was like, you've got the confidence in you and I'm going to pull it out. So through that as well, which is showing me that. But yeah, so um, just wanted to show you guys, share with you guys my experience of David's tent, of camping, and just how loving God is, and he loves you all. And honestly, guys, go next year. I think they've already released the dates. I think it was like the 26th of August, the 29th, or something like that. But honestly, guys, go. It's beautiful. But um, yeah, I'm going to stop going on. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, please, guys. Comment down below and please, please, please don't forget to subscribe. I really want to like just share more what God's doing and how I can help you guys and just encourage you guys. And yeah, but anyway, uh, peace out. <laughs>